Hey guys, allow me to ruin your Thanksgiving weekend by reminding you that flat earthers exist in this world. That is all. Thank you to my patrons, Fireshard, Alan Morton, and Miss Fixit. Oh, you wanted an actual video about flat earth? <sighs> One question I am often asked is how earthquakes and volcanoes work on a flat earth. The short answer is, however earthquakes and volcanoes work on an earth with curvature, they work exactly the same on an Earth without curvature. Considering you're a flat earther, I find it hard to believe you subscribe to the idea of plate tectonics, which is the basis of how volcanoes and earthquakes happen. I'm sure we all remember our middle school science classes where the movement of these plates can cause the ground to shift or spike, and depending on where you live, it can be more or less common if you live close to a plate boundary or fault line. Now that Eric Debay has brought this up, that does indeed make me wonder. Do flat earthers think there are moving plates beneath our feet? If so, what causes that to happen? No special explanation for these phenomena are necessary, because the theories that exist for their occurrences are irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. That's not entirely true. The movement of these plates are due to the heat and radioactivity that comes from the center of the Earth. The center of the Earth is kept hot due to a few reasons such as the immense amount of pressure given by gravity pulling the Earth's weight upon itself and radioactive decay of elements. The first of which I named requires the Earth to be round and gravity to be real, and the second requires the Earth to be very old. It is then this mantle convection that causes the plates to move, approximately up to 10 centimeters per year. When you have a sudden movement of plates along its fault, you get an earthquake. When plates move under another plate, you get a volcanic eruption. But without the Earth being round and the center of the Earth to be molten hot, there wouldn't be plate movements, which in turn means there wouldn't be volcanoes or earthquakes. So you're wrong. These two natural disasters go hand in hand with currently accepted science of the shape of the Earth. Unless you want to take a jab at explaining how plates move on the flat Earth? Having said that, the prevailing theory for the cause of earthquakes actually makes more sense on a planar Earth than a spherical one. Okay, so you're not going to explain how plates move on a flat Earth, but instead you're going to try to use this to undermine the globe Earth. Gotcha. Plate tectonics theory holds that large, adjacent, grinding plates of land build up friction until one fault plane slips under the other, causing an earthquake. This could theoretically happen regardless of the shape of the Earth, but even the mainstream images and terminology employed from plate tectonics to fault planes all suggest the geology of a level plane, and not a spherical ball. You've got to be kidding me here. You can't actually be saying that plate tectonics is more consistent with the Flat Earth model because our textbook diagrams are flat? That's got to be the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. Look, you should probably instead try to provide a proper explanation, plus evidence on how plates move in the first place on a Flat Earth model. Everything else falls into place after that, but until you start with the basics, your hypothesis has no backing. As for volcanoes, the globe model purports that the lava which erupts and is ejected from volcanoes comes from deep inside the magical magma Tootsie Roll center of their Tootsie Pop Earth. Lava that comes out of volcanoes actually comes from the mantle, not the core. The very center of the Earth, the inner core, is solid. Despite the incredibly high temperature, it remains a solid because it is composed of different elements than the rest, mostly iron and nickel. The mantle layer, meanwhile, contains melted rock, or magma as we like to call it. Looks like you need to study a bit on some middle school science before trying to debunk it. In reality, however, the longest and deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Superdeep, after 20 years and busting several drills, managed to bore only 8 miles down. So the entire ball earth model taught in schools, showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers, where this molten magma supposedly rests, are all purely speculation, as we have never actually even penetrated through beyond the crust. But you don't actually need to dig that far down to know what's down there. There are plenty of other ways to know what kind of elements are down there and how deep each layer goes. The method is similar to an x-ray. How does a doctor know what your insides look like without actually digging a hole into your chest? Scientists have used seismic waves, which are waves that travel through the earth. By recording these waves, we can study how these waves bounce around, accelerate, and decelerate or change directions in the earth. Traveling through different layers of the earth, for example, would cause the velocity of the waves to change. Then by tracing the path of these waves, such as by mapping its start and end locations and variables, we can map out what the inside of the earth looks like. And of course, this is also entirely based on the fact that the earth is round, because waves travel through the earth. So we can have a tracking station on one side of the earth where the wave starts and record it after it passes through the earth on another side where another tracking station resides. This is impossible on a flat earth. But regardless, you still need to explain how plate tectonics work at all on a flat earth and bonus points if you can tell us what is beneath our feet. What we do know 
is that Earth's matter gets denser and more pressurized, therefore more heated, the further down you go. Really? I mean, that's true on a round Earth, but why would that be the case for a flat Earth? You don't believe in gravity, so you definitely don't believe in the pressure created by gravity, so how do you explain this? Or perhaps it's the radioactive decay of elements? But that would require you to admit the Earth is billions of years old, which I have a feeling you're not ready to do yet. As you drill downwards, the temperature constantly increases approximately 1 degree Fahrenheit per 50 feet, so that after only 1.5 miles down, it is already the temperature of boiling water. And by the time you reached 15 miles down, all rocks would be melted down and molten. Actually, the temperature increase depends on where you are on the Earth, but for areas away from fault lines, it is 1 degree Fahrenheit per 70 feet, or 1 degree Celsius per 40 meters. This is called the geothermal gradient. Once you're in the Earth's core, you're looking at a temperature of around 5,200 degrees Celsius. But again, I must ask, why is it that on a flat Earth it gets hotter as you go down? You're stating these points as if the audience is supposed to know already, but you haven't provided a single explanation on how all of this works on a flat Earth. In other words, molten magma does not originate several thousand miles below us in the core of a globe, but rather is a layer of our level Earth starting just 12 to 15 miles down. This ever-boiling, slowly-moving, molten mass of matter and toxic gases finds and creates areas of least resistance, which ultimately result in both earthquakes and volcanoes. Rock becomes liquid at about 1,000 degrees Celsius. Using the math we have, 1 degree per 40 meters, that means we'll need to travel 40,000 meters downwards to reach molten lava. That is 4 kilometers down, which is where the upper mantle is. So yes, lava comes from the upper mantle. No one claims it comes from the Earth's core. Your argument is ridiculous because you can't even get the actual scientific idea right before attempting to debunk it. This is a new type of straw manning. The movement and stress causes shearing, folds, and fault planes, which, when violently resettling into place, we call earthquakes. And the nearby pressure release valves that spew out excess magma and noxious gases, we call volcanoes. It's fine that you also subscribe to the idea of a heated earth, but you still have yet to explain where that heat comes from. Once again, either you accept the radioactive decay of old elements, which requires you to believe the earth is billions of years old, or you have to admit the earth is round. In reality, it is both factors, amongst others, that causes the core of the earth to be incredibly hot, but I'm only requiring you to choose one. Professor Silliman continues, It is a fact well ascertained by scientific researches that the whole inside of the earth is one mass of fire, Okay, so for the rest of the video, he goes on to read us a nice little fairy tale about how the inside of the earth is a big pot of fire, combustion, and lakes of burning sulfur. Basically, it seems to me that he's taking the metaphor too far and is starting to promote the inside of the earth as some sort of hellish place. Whatever, you do you. But again, I must reiterate once again that you have to prove where exactly the heat comes from. If you think there's a fire, where's the fire coming from? On a flat earth model, it just doesn't make any sense and there isn't a good explanation. You tried so hard in this video to disprove the round earth that you couldn't even take a step back and see what this means for your own model. Very, very disappointing. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching and thank you to the usual awesome people, Fireshard, Alan Morton, and Misfixit for their generous support on Patreon. I actually may or may not release a video for next week since I will be busy, but I hope you'll stay tuned regardless. Bye-bye.